Hi there. This video will be of interest to anybody who's interested in hiking, anybody interested in hiking the Southwest Coast Path uh, down in Cornwall, uh, anybody interested in photography while you're hiking. A little while ago, I posted that I was doing a hike for Shelter, which is the homelessness charity. And uh, in this video, I'm going to report on uh, how it went. Uh, I walked with my son uh, for about 25 miles, starting uh, just north of Newquay uh, in a place called Porth and uh, walking to uh, Padstow. We walked for two days. Um, we um, stopped at the Tryanan uh, Youth Hostel at the end of the first day. Uh, and um, in this video, I'm going to show you where we went, um, give you a quick overview of the path uh, and how we got around. In terms of hiking the southwest coast, coast path, if you're only doing sections, uh, the thing that I have tended to do is to uh, go to where you last stopped walking, park up, walk to the next point, and then take a bus back to where your car is. In this case, we stayed uh, down in St Ives the night before we, uh, we walked. We got up early uh, and we drove to Porth. I'd found a place where we could park up, which I thought wouldn't attract any attention. And then we picked up the coast path. Uh, in terms of cameras, I took my X-T3 uh, with the 18 to 55, and I took some filters, uh, but at the end, I was going to take my tripod and think about doing some long exposures. In the end, I just focused on, uh, on the hiking, so I didn't take in a tripod. However, I think I got some nice pictures along the way. Uh, just above Porth, you get nice views of uh, Newquay off to the south uh, and some nice headlands. Now, I haven't done perfectly well here. To be honest, I've, um, I've got the headland overlapping the uh, headland of uh, Fistral Beach, which I'm a little bit cross about. Lots of people who walk the southwest coast path swear by Paddy Dillon's uh, book, and this goes all the way from uh, Minehead down to the end of uh, South Haven, all six, 630 miles. And it's great. It's got full descriptions of each of the legs, and it's got uh, sections of OS maps. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, it... I don't know. I just can't get on with it. The one that I really like is this one here, which is uh, the Cornwall Coast Path by Henry Stedman and Joel Knoll. Um, and what I like about it is the, uh, they've got hand-drawn maps. Oh. The maps are great because um, they are to scale. Um, but they're far more detailed than an OS map have, and it tells you if at any point on the uh, path where you, you've got some confusion about where you, which way you're going to go next, this book tells you, oh, look out for um, this gatepost, that bit of wall, um, turn left at uh, uh, that blade of grass. It's not quite that detailed, um, but it, it's much more useful, I find, than the Paddy Dillon one. The other thing uh, in terms of planning that can be useful is that the Southwest Coast Path organization has a pretty good website and it has various itineraries, um, but the standard one is sort of 58, 59 days, something like that. Uh, and on here, you can see that this first section um, that we, we walked, uh, <laughs> we were walking north, whereas this guide and most of the guides go from um, uh, they go anti-clockwise. In this case, we were walking clockwise. Uh, but this section was described as moderate. Uh, it gives you an indication of the elevations that you're going to have and also the um, ascents and descents and gives you things to, to look out. So it can be really helpful in planning. Uh, obviously, it's better to look at uh, on a big uh, screen rather than um, when you're actually walking, you, you want something different. In this case, um, when I'm doing little sections, uh, I'm not that bothered. The, the coast, um, uh, this book is, is sort of good enough for me. Um, I, I know there are lots of apps out there. I'm not that bothered about those. And essentially, if, if you're coast walking, if you keep the sea on one side and the land on the other, uh, you're going in the right direction. So you're pretty good. 
In terms of weather, we got really lucky on one day and really unlucky on the other. Uh, we had beautiful, warm, blue sky day. Um, and this is at the end of November, the beginning of December of 2022. Uh, we had beautiful, warm day, uh, really comfortable walking um, uh, temperature, not too hot, not too cold. Uh, the winds weren't too uh, extreme. So that was the first day. Uh, the second day, we got really unlucky. We were walking for about 10 minutes and basically the heavens opened and it kept on going all day. So by the time we, we arrived in um, Padstow, we were absolutely soaking wet. Uh, luckily, uh, um, we were able to, to go back to St. Ives, go to our, our flat and dry everything out um, and have a good change of clothes. Of course, if you're doing the entirety of the Southwest Coast Bath, particularly if you're in a tent, how you dry out, um, that's, that's much harder. Yeah, so we did this hike for shelter. I'm really pleased to say that we raised nearly £800. Uh, the donation page is still open. I'll leave a link below. If you want to um, make a contribution, that would be fantastic. Um, this is the hat that they donated to me uh, for hiking. In the end, uh, I used one of my own beanies. But there you go. It's quite sort of Christmassy at this time of the year. Uh, and if anybody wants this and is prepared to give me £20 or $20, I'll send it to you. In terms of me walking the Southwest Coast Path, I have so, to date uh, just focused on the Cornish section and I've got about, now that I've done these two days, about six more days hiking. I've got to walk from Bude uh, down to Port Isaac and I've got to walk the section from Charleston to um, Lou. And then I will have over more than 10 years, I'll have walked the entirety of the Cornish section of the Southwest Coast Path. I am intending uh, to, to think about whether I want to take on the whole of the Southwest Coast Path, um, but I've got a lot of planning and things to think about if I'm going to do that. So uh, on from, um, uh, from Porth, sort of the next thing that you get to uh, is Watergate Bay. And Watergate Bay is just a fantastic bay. Uh, I thought it was going to be uh, quite a big dip down into the bay and back out the other side, uh, but not so much. After Watergate Bay, we uh, ended up, uh, we walked through a place called Stem Cove, and that was really great. And I'm quite pleased with this picture, um, this sort of um, uh, river dropping down into the the ocean uh, and really mean and moody. After that, we got to Morgan Porth, uh, where we had a well-deserved uh, breakfast. Didn't have a pint of beer, um, but was really pleased that Sharps was taking Christmas seriously. And then we hiked on, uh, we, we got a little bit wet just around Morgan Porth. Um, the rain started for a little bit, uh, we put on all our waterproofs and then uh, it all stopped again. And then we had this fantastic run along Bedruthen Steps, which are these, this is fantastic bay, if you don't know, it's fantastic bay with lots of little... Uh, rock formations actually sitting on the beach. Obviously, what's happened over the years is that the, the headland has uh, been eroded uh, and consequently left the sort of jagged um, uh, islands on, on the beach. And we got really lucky. We had some... Um, by this stage, there was a, lot, so a bit of mist, a bit of mizzle, uh, which was being backlit um, from the sun behind it. And we got this sort of really... Uh, sort of very um, sort of quite ethereal sort of um, uh, feeling uh, looking back towards the sun uh, from the north side of Bedruth and uh, looking south. After Bedruthen, uh, we went through Porth Coffin, 
uh, which is a walking beat. Nobody there when we got there. Uh, it would be absolutely beautiful to uh, go and escape the world uh, at that beach. Um, but we were walking through, so we carried on round the uh, headland and into Tryon and uh, where we stayed in the, the youth hostel. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, we had uh, really nice um, people working there. Um, there were some nice beers on tap. We were able to get uh, a good hearty meal in the evening. And then the next morning, we got a really good breakfast before we headed out. In terms of photography, um, the first day was absolutely fine. Was using my X-T3 quite a lot. Um, in the morning, I got up before sunrise and I shot this four uh, image panorama of the sunrise over Tryon and uh, Bay. Really pleased with that, apart from it was shot at ISO 3200, so unusable really, uh, but it really gave you a, a sense of what this place was like first thing in the morning. As we uh, left um, Tryanan, you go straight around to Constantine Bay and then Boobies Bay, and within probably half an hour of walking, uh, we were getting absolutely soaking. We carried on walking, and it was so wet, I had to put the camera uh, into a uh, waterproof bag. So the only pictures that I got on the second day really were from um, my phone. We walked onto Travaux's Head Lighthouse, which was really good. Just round the corner from Travaux's Head Lighthouse is Mother Ivy's Bay. I've never been there before. It's absolutely beautiful and I really want to go back uh, another time. You can tell from these images that there is a beautiful composition to be had there with the, um, the RNLI um, life uh, boat launch just in the, in the background and a really beautiful bay in, in front of it. So I really want to go back there. We carried on. Harlem uh, Bay. Now Harlem Bay is really nice as well. Uh, so we had coffee in this uh, place called the Black Box um, Coffee Shop uh, down on Harlem Bay. Really recommend that. It's a really nice place. Great coffee. Uh, we then carried on uh, along the headland. Um, there is another composition here, Merope Island or Merope Island. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. I really want to go back here because I think there's going to be a great composition right by there. Uh, the hiking was good. We got to uh, Stepper Point where um, there were a bunch of uh, heifers that uh, didn't particularly want us to walk past them. So we ended up uh, climbing over this uh, um, stone wall and then round the corner to Hawker Cove. And Hawker Cove is another place that I really want to go back on a, on a, um, a better light day and with <laughs> when it's not teeming down with rain uh, and when I can spend a bit of time to try and find a great composition. It's there, but I, I didn't find it. I didn't spend the time to, to look for it. As you can see here, we were absolutely soaked by the time we got to Padstow. So this hike was for shelter. And um, so far, we've raised over £750. Um, I'm going to leave a link below. Uh, there's still time to donate. If you want to donate, please do. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye for now.